here's a quick picture of that bracelet. Let's get into it. We are just going to hop right into this tutorial. It's really simple. It might seem complicated, but it's not. And it's so simple that I think I want to do like a bigger statement piece, like something insane, like maybe with like six or seven bracelets. We shall see. So I am cutting a couple of these strips. And I think I did three of these strips. And we're doing them at, I believe I ended up at like one and a quarter. I know it looks like it's one inch right there because it, it kind of is, but I think it's easiest to turn at one and a quarter because turning this sucker is going to be a little tight, but you go on ahead and you sew these together end to end and you can make them as big as you want to make them. Um, it might be cooler to even make it even bigger but you wanna be sure that you have room for your yarn to pass through. And once you figure out how to make these, the world is just at your fingertips. You can make so many different bracelets and whatnot, it's amazing. So I'm putting them right sides together and I'm ironing all the way down. And I decided to grab this little tool that I purchased at some convention to see if I like it. I don't like this tool for bias tape. I think it takes out all the stretch but for straight of grain, it works pretty good. It does not work on this wool mat, but again, I'm trying to be careful because you don't want to warp your cutting mat, so on and so forth. So after you do that, go on ahead and sew your regular traditional quarter inch down the side and just lock it up. And again, I used three, I used three strips of uh, the width of the fabric for this because when we do the weave, it's gonna eat up quite a bit of this fabric, which is cool. Now I'm grabbing some pearl cotton, just a really, really, really strong thread. And I'm gonna take a needle and I am gonna sew through the end of this a couple of times after I go on ahead and thread this very large needle. This is not a small needle, this is a yarn needle. And I'm gonna sew through the side of this just a couple of times and I'm gonna be sure that I catch it. And then I'm going to send that tip all the way back through and then pull it out through the other side. Now this takes a little bit of patience and Tula fabric does not turn as easy as some of the lighter fabrics. So again, you might wanna cut your tube a little bit bigger. And if you do, just be sure to put enough yarn in there so that it gets really nice and full. I just went ahead and tied a hole, or tied a knot at the end of this, um, at the end of my thread and my needle again. And now I am doing it again and using this bodkin. I think a bodkin is gonna be a little bit easier to thread this yarn through with. And that one's by, I think, Nancy's Notions. I have so many different bodkins, guys. There's so many different ways to send something through. I'm using three strands of yarn folded in half and they're really, really long. So if you have some yarn that's just laying around, which you probably do, just craft yarn, that super cheap yarn, this is a great project to use some of it up because it uses up quite a bit of yarn. Again, it's one piece that's the entire length, three whole tubes full. So all I'm saying is you take your yarn and you fold it in half and then you run it all the way through so that there's actually six strands of yarn in this little tiny tube. So you measure your yarn, you fold it in half and then you send it up the tube. And I used a bodkin and a needle and thread just to get it through there. And it worked out fine. Now I am trimming the yarn even with the ends of the tube. Look at that little tube. I'm telling you guys, there are so many things that you can do with this project once you, you figure out how to make this little tube. So many different things. You can make bracelets and necklaces and belts and hair accessories, a little bit of everything. So right now I'm just trying to clean off that edge and I'm gonna pull the yarn out and pull down the fabric because what I wanna get is a little bit of the fabric tip without any of the yarn in it, just so that I can fold it over and stitch it onto the bracelet a little bit easier. So once I get the six strands out, I'm just gonna pull them out a little bit 
and I'm going to trim them off and then I'm going to pull the fabric back up so that there's no yarn in the tip. Now I'm going to grab one of these bracelets. Now these bracelets are super inexpensive on Amazon. I have a good thick wrist and you are adding quite a bit of bulk with these. So I grabbed the plus size bracelets, but they have a bunch of different sizes. And I like this bracelet. I like the ones that are flat better than the completely round ones, but they're inexpensive. You can get like a hundred for like 10 bucks, something insane. So now I'm just rolling it over and I'm going to grab a little clip just to clip it there so that I can prep my needle and thread once I get it rolled over and the ends are tucked in. I don't want any unfinished ends hanging out. And yes, I have long nails, so watching me do stuff is either entertaining or annoying. It's one or the other. There's usually not anybody who's in between. But my nails are kind of my thing, guys, so just ignore them or try to. And so I just stitched it with some dark purple thread, which matches. And now I'm going to grab two other bracelets. Now, this is super easy. We learned to do this in kindergarten. And it's just going to be a basket weave. So we're going to go over, under, over. The first one that we do is starting over. So then it's going to go through the second one in the middle. And the next one is going to go, it's going to go over it. And then you're just going to start weaving it. Now the first couple of ones are going to kind of set the precedent for how thick you want this and how tight it's going to be. And then after that, it really is just sitting there watching, you know, everybody loves Raymond. <laughs> Doing a little weave. Not difficult, fun, and this ombre fabric really looks cute with it. So we're just going over, under, over, under. Now you're going to be able to see the bracelet for a while. But once you keep going, it gets tighter and tighter and tighter. And then eventually you will not be able to see this bracelet. So you don't have to worry about sealing it because this is not real um, gold or anything like that. So it would tarnish, but you won't even be able to see it. This is such a fun project in my opinion. It's just the kind of thing that's right up my alley. The kind of thing that doesn't take forever to do. It's just simple. It's the kind of craft that you probably did as a kid. Make your own bracelet, right? And so you're just going to keep weaving just like this over, under, over, under until you get all the way around. Now, when you get around, you're going to be like, okay, we're done. But no, you're not. Keep pushing and pushing and pulling on this. It's not going to hurt anything but there's space where you do not think that there's space. And it looks like it's super difficult and it's really not. And of course I have all of the tweezers and tools to help me thread this through when my nails can't do it or it's just a little bit too tight. I cut it at an angle so that it goes through these little holes a little bit better. But you're gonna keep pushing and tugging and pulling and then eventually when you finish, you want to finish this on the inside. And you are going to do the same thing that we did before. You're going to cut it off and you're going to try to expose those yarn strands, expose the yarn strands, and then cut them off so that you just have fabric. And then you're going to do a little pull and tuck and roll it so that it looks good and it blends. And then you have a really cute bracelet. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe. And I will catch you guys on the next one. All right, bye-bye.